Okay, so this is our first Zoom call for our new eight-week leadership program, class, course, track, whatever you want to call it. Um, I am going to be uploading all of these to YouTube. I didn't realize that you could upload Zooms to YouTube, so um, hopefully that'll be a really good um, space if you do want to go back and re-listen to a call or, um, or if you have to miss. Um, because we're going to kind of move fast. I, I've only got 30 minutes, and I've got a lot of things I want to talk about each week. I have changed the, um, the kind of the course plan a little bit. Um, if you noticed in the pin post, I, I shuffled around some of the topics. Um, I'm constantly reading things and getting inspired and like, and then I just want to share something else with you. And, um, you know, as I learn, I want to share and I want you to learn. And so, um, so I'm, I'm super excited about what, what I'm reading and what I'm learning and how I can pass this on to you guys. Um, so this is definitely a leadership class, leadership eight weeks. We're gonna be talking about team stuff, sponsoring, compensation plans, building a business, you know, being, making money, earning a real income with your trades and business um, by building a team and sponsoring and growing and, and really making the biggest ripple effect on the mission that you can make by bringing women into this company and you know, making the biggest impact that you can. Um, but also about, you know, really stretching yourself as a leader of a team. And, and, you know, I didn't put any limitations on who could be in this group. You could be, a, we've got people that are brand new CEs, um, people that have, you know, been CEs for a couple of years are on the cusp of, of becoming directors, uh, people who have been sponsored anybody. I didn't put any limitation on it because I don't want to limit anybody. Um, but I do want you to know right up front very clearly that we're not going to be talking about booking parties. We're not going to be talking about sales. Um, those are huge parts of your business. Your personal business is tremendously important and you're always learning and growing in that area. But this is this eight week program is really going to be about the sponsorship piece, the leadership piece, um, and learning the continuing education piece, sorry, piece um, of your business. So just want to put that out there so that everybody knows what I'm going to be talking about. Um, and if at any point you're like, whoa, this is too much, or I don't know, I need to go work on booking parties, that's totally fine too. So it's, this whole experience is going to be about grace and gentleness. And um, so with that, I want to start, I wrote a little pledge um, based on uh, some of the things that were put in that initial post where I asked you guys to comment. And Tracy Warren pointed out um, some negativity. And so I just want to start with, with a little pledge. Um, and so I'm going to put this on the page, but um, if you would just, I'm going to unmute everybody for just a minute. Um, so you're uh, all unmuted now. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I know. So I, I thought instead of like raising your right hand, we could, we could all make hearts. So everybody make a little heart and repeat after me. I state your name. I spring. Hereby pledge to fall in love with the process. Hereby pledge to fall in love with the process. And let go of the outcome. And let go, let go of the outcome. I promise to find joy in all the activities of my business. I promise to find joy in all the activities of my business. I know that my words have power and influence. I know, I that, know that my words have and power and influence. and influence. And I will pay attention to the way I talk to myself and others. And I will pay attention to the way, I talk the way that I talk to myself and others. I know I am a world changer and storyteller. I know I'm a world changer and storyteller. Believing in myself must happen before I can believe in others. Believing in myself must happen before I can believe in others. I will allow myself to dream big because my success is her success. I will allow myself to dream big because my success is her success. I will run my own race and not compare. I will run my own race and not compare. I promise to treat myself with grace. I promise to treat myself with grace. To find gratitude whenever possible. To find gratitude whenever possible. And always think abundantly. And always think abundantly. Okay, you guys just made a big promise.
So I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to put it on the page. A lot of, lot of stuff in there um, that you're promising to do. But I promise you, I promise you that if you adhere to those things, if you find that joy, if you give yourself grace, if you let go of the outcome and fall in love with the process of growth and leadership and learning, you will enjoy this so much, so much. Not just the next eight weeks, but the next eight years that you're with uh, and, and beyond with Trades of Hope. Okay, so um, today's topic, I I'd originally wanted to, I was going to start with a compensation plan, but then, of course, I started reading this new book. As a director team, we're reading this book. I think it's called How to Be a Direct Selling Rockstar. I'm not even sure. Something like that. Um, they only, they haven't even sent us the physical book yet. We just got a PDF of the first four chapters. And after reading the first four chapters of this book, I'm like, I need to change my plan. I can't start with the compensation plan because that is not a goal in and of itself. That is actually just a strategy. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but we, we need to start with goals. And so I'll have to tell you lately, I have been kind of avoiding even using the word goals, which sounds kind of weird. Um, if you'll notice those of you that were at Empower, there wasn't a lot of talk. There was almost no talk about setting goals or goal using, you know, having a goal for, you know, a specific time period. It really wasn't about that at all. It's because we're all reading these same books. Um, Joshua Medcalf, who wrote Hustle and Chop Wood, Carry Water, um, also wrote a book called Burn Your Goals. Um, I haven't read that book yet, but he does allude to um, the idea that goals can actually be really limiting in, in for certain people, especially if you're making the wrong goals or you're setting goals about the wrong things. And that's that whole idea of falling in love, in love with the process and letting go of the outcome. Um, you know, we say all the time that your goals are set in concrete, the timeline set in sand. That's absolutely true. But I think what it, what, after reading this other book and kind of bridging the gap between not having a goal at all and having something, a goal that's actually going to limit you or create like deflation in your business, I think I've discovered kind of this happy place. And, um, and I've realized once again how important it is to have a goal. And I'm using singular one because you really can only have one goal at a time. Um, because if you have too many, your energy gets dispersed and you're not focused. Um, the, the, the author used the example of if you're trying to light a piece of paper on fire with the sun and a magnifying glass, you have to really, really pinpoint the sun's rays. And I remember doing this as a kid. I'm sure some of you guys have probably tried to do this before, to burn a hole in a piece of paper with the sun. If you, if you waver a little bit or you, you keep moving or you, you shift even just the tiniest bit, you won't achieve burning that hole through the paper. You gotta be really laser focused. And that's the same with goals. You really can only have one. Um, but it's super, super important to have that one laser sharp goal. Um, so what I'm gonna go through this morning is helping you identify maybe what you currently think your goal is, is not really a great goal. It's actually limiting you, that there's a better way to set a goal and that if maybe you already have one, but maybe you're not being as laser focused as you really want, or maybe you have two or three and it's watering down um, the, whole, the whole process for you. So I'm gonna go through um, goal setting in, in a slightly different way than maybe um, you've heard me talk about before, or even that you've thought about before. Um, now I listened to you guys, or I read what you guys wrote um, on that thread, and a lot of you said things like your goal was promoting to a certain rank. Like I wanna be a manager by the end of the year, or um, I wanna help my team grow, or I wanna support my team. Now these are all things that I've said for the last four and a half years along the way in Trades of Hope, and I've listened to tons of people say the same thing and label those things as goals you know, promoting to director, promoting to manager, um, helping my team grow and supporting my team. Well, I start reading this new direct sales book and, and one of the first chapters is about how those things are not actually goals. Those things are strategies to help you achieve your actual goal. Becoming a manager is such an arbitrary thing. It is not personally connected to anything in your life. It has nothing to do really with your why. Um, and so when you start to waver from that or you don't achieve that thing that you've identified as your goal, like of becoming a manager, then it's really deflating and it doesn't give you actual motivation and it doesn't inspire you. 
So, you know, even, you know, ask yourself, does promoting to a rank really inspire you? Not necessarily. Now, for some people it might, um, but those things are not really goals. Those things are also wanting something for somebody else. When you talk about helping my team grow or supporting my team, those are all great things to do. You have to do those things. You do those things to help other people achieve their goals so you can achieve yours. But that's really, that turns into a situation where sometimes you're wanting it for somebody instead of working with the people that wanna work and staying really laser focused on the activities that you're doing to help you achieve your goal and help others achieve theirs. Um, so just, just wanna shift that a little bit in your mind. If that is what you, if I asked you right now, what's your goal and you're like helping my team grow, yeah, we're gonna identify something different to help you have a goal that's a little bit more tied into um, you. And so, okay, so, and then, and also to be an inspiring leader, which this is a leadership program, you have to be inspired. You have to be inspired by the work that you're doing and by the goals that you have set for yourself or the goal that you have set for yourself. And, and you have to project that. So I'm gonna share with you guys because I don't think anybody knows what my goal is this year. Very few people know. So I'm gonna make sure that you know um, by the end of this conversation. Um, and then hopefully you can share some of yours too. Um, okay. And, and also as leaders, if you know your goal and you're really clear on this process, then you can now, you can then go help others do the same thing in your downlines. That's how you help support your team. You're by, by using the things that you're going to learn today to help your team then set a goal um, in, a, in, in this uh, a little more laser focused, burn through the paper type of way. Okay, um, so there's seven steps to this process that's laid out in this, in this chapter, and so I'm gonna go through them. And step one, which I think is, is really wonderful, and I totally get this, and maybe you get this too. You need to choose a goal that makes your heart leap. Okay, if, if, if becoming a director makes your heart leap, then maybe that's okay to make that your goal. Your goal needs to be um, thrilling for you. It needs to excite you. So think about that. Does helping your team grow really make your heart leap or is it something else? Is, and you need to dig into that a little bit. So number one, your goal has to make your heart leap. Now, if you already have that goal, that's awesome. We're just going to develop it through these steps and make sure that, you know, we're going to refine it a little bit. If you don't have it, then step two is really, really important. You need to brainstorm and find your goal by asking yourself some questions. So questions like, what would I do with an extra thousand dollars a week? Do I want it? What would I do with a new car? Where would I go if I could go anywhere on vacation? What do I want to do for my home? What renovations, what changes, what modifications do I want to do? Is there a room in my house that I'm dying to transform? Maybe it's your master bedroom. How many people's master bedroom is like the lamest room in your house? It's the lamest room in my house. Like it's the last room and it should be the best room in your house. You know, I would love to transform my, my master bedroom. Maybe you want to get out of credit card debt. Maybe your family has a dream. Maybe you guys want to rent an RV and go cross country next summer. Maybe, um, you know, it has something to do with sending a kid to a private school or a child to college or, you know, a, a family dream, something that you've wanted to do. Maybe go on a mission trip as a family. Um, maybe it's just a personal wish. It can be just about you. Your goal can be really, really personal and just about you. So those are just some ideas to help you kind of brainstorm and pinpoint what your actual goal is that's making your heart leap if you haven't already identified that. Or refining and asking, you know, kind of like if you think you know what it is, then kind of comparing back and saying, okay, well, maybe actually I've, this is more exciting to me. I just felt my pulse race when I, when I thought about this. Or when she said that, I was like, ooh. You know, so maybe you need to reevaluate. Okay, then step three is don't confuse a goal with a strategy, which we've already kind of addressed. Promoting to a new rank in a compensation plan is not a goal. It is a strategy to help you achieve your goal. If your goal is taking your family on a mission trip next summer, then achieving that means promoting to a new rank and making more money. 
Um, and so that's a strategy that you're going to use. And, and a really, a comp the compensation plan is a really clear roadmap and blueprint to achieving that and another strategy to use to achieve that actual goal, okay? So don't confuse a goal with a strategy. This for me was the biggest like wake up in this whole, in this whole chapter. Step four, I've already also kind of addressed, but one goal, the maximum amount of time is one year and to achieve it, and you take it one step at a time. A goal is your compass. So don't divide up your energies, don't divide up your passions, don't divide up the thing that's thrilling your heart right now by having multiple goals. Pick one. And, and you can test it to make sure that it's right in these three ways. Number one is the thrill test. Does it make your heart beat faster? Do you feel like when you imagine yourself achieving it, does you feel incredibly satisfied? Does it make your eyes shine bright? Do you just kind of like catch your breath a little bit? You know, does it thrill you? The second test is the logic test. Is it logical? You know, if you have two or three goals, which one makes the most sense to run for in this next six month or 12 month or whatever the time frame is? Which one's the most logical? Um, and then the urgency test. Does, does one of your goals have more urgency attached to it than another? So this applies more to like a direct selling company that would offer like a trip to Cabo. Like you wanna, if somebody wants to go for that, there's an urgency to that because there's already a timeline to that. With us, there's, there might not be the same kind of urgency, but maybe there is for you. If the goal is associated with paying something by a certain time, you know, then there is an urgency there. Um, so if this is an opportunity that you can't afford to pass up, then there's an urgency there and maybe that needs to be the goal. Step five, this one uh, is, is really, really important because, uh, well, we fall, we fall prey to peer pressure all the time, even as grown women, especially as grown women sometimes. I think, you know, we think we're supposed to say something a certain way or do something a certain way because it's what everybody else is doing. And I don't want to actually admit that my goal is, you know, it might, might be perceived as selfish or it might be, for, you know, people might not understand because, you know, they don't know me. This is something that I struggle with a lot. And, and so step five is be true to yourself. Goals are deeply, deeply personal. And you can't allow your fear of judgment hold you back. You don't have to share your goal with the world, right? That's okay. Um, but don't make your goal for someone else. Or don't make your goal because you think it's what you have to do because you're a compassionate entrepreneur with trades of hope. Your goal can be your goal and you have to make it true for you and personal for you. Um, and, and that's where it's gonna have the most power. In the book, the author talked about sitting down with a top leader in a direct selling company and um, you know, asking her what her goal was. And she was kind of like, well, I don't really have one. And I don't know. And I was sort of seeing myself in this conversation as I was reading. And, she's, and, and the woman was like, well, I got the sense that she was kind of embarrassed by her goal. And she didn't want to say it out loud. Well, turns out this, this person, this top leader in this direct sales company, her goal was to be recognized on stage. And she felt like that was like, kind of selfish and vain and she didn't want to admit that but it was the thing that fired her up and thrilled her and made her want to want to build her business and run and grow and so you know i think about that because sometimes you know i think a lot of people do that you don't want to admit that maybe your goal is just to be have your name called at retreats so you can go up on stage and win an award that's okay you know as human beings we want to be seen we want to you know that's something that you can value and it's and it's an okay thing to make your goal so i'm going to share with you guys what my goal for this year is and i'm i'm going to be true to myself and i'm going to not be embarrassed or ashamed of it uh, and i'm going to explain it so that you understand and it doesn't sound like a completely vain goal um, so you guys know that I was a teacher before I, I did Trades of Hope and um, as a teacher, you know, one of like the badges of honor that you wear is that you don't get paid much, right? So like, you know, teachers, especially in Florida, it's not like you're, you're doing it for the money and that was like a common theme among my, my peers. It's like, well, you know, we're all, we all love our job. We're so passionate about our work and we don't care that we don't make any money. Um, I've come to realize that that's completely wrong and unfair. And, 
you know, when you do something that you love and you're passionate about and you're impacting lives and you're, you know, impacting future generations, whether it's as a teacher or anything else that you do in your life, you should be fairly compensated for that work. And so the first year that I earned as much doing Trades of Hope as I did teaching was a really big deal for me. And to look at that number on a, on a 10, or whatever, 1099, on the tax thing, and realize that I had just made the same amount that I had made as a teacher was really exciting. And then last year, I made a lot more than I had ever made as a teacher. And it didn't even dawn on me that it was more than I had ever made in my entire life um, doing any job that I had ever done. And like my husband kind of looked at me and he was like, well, you work really hard. That's really awesome. And I was like, yeah, like that, that, that was really exciting. Um, and so then I got, I wanted to, I wanted to achieve something this year um, that, see, it's even hard for me to say it because I don't, I want to like frame it so you don't judge me for it. I wanted to, I wanted to make a hundred thousand dollars. I wanted to have, I wanted to say that Trades of Hope is a six figure income opportunity. I wanted to be able to say that. I wanted it to be real. And I knew that 2017 was a, was a year that it could happen because I made $75,000 in 2016. So I was like, okay, I just need to make a little bit more and I can do that. And so I was like, okay, that's my goal. And um, you can see why it's a little hard to say out loud, but holy cow, guys, like, here we are, we're, we're getting there and, and it's on track. Six months in the year, I, I did my CE earnings report to see where I was and I started crying because I was doing it. Um, and that's why I know it's the right goal for me. Um, yeah, it's about, it's about money, but it's about so much more. It's about inspiring others to do something that seemed impossible. It's about inspiring people to be fair, not only fairly compensated, but really compensated really well for work that you love doing. I mean, how awesome is that? And I, I wanted to, to do that also for what it means for my family and all of that, but also for what it means for the team, what it means for the world, what it, I mean, all of it. So I hope that you can see where I'm coming from with that goal. And I hope that you, um, you see what I mean about setting a goal that like, lights you up. Like I'm sweating. I'm, I'm, I'm feel like I'm going to cry. Like this is my goal and, and it fires me up. So I know it's the right goal and I'm just being really true to myself. And, and I've never said that out loud. So there you go. Um, but I think the, you know, thank you, but I'm learning a lot that I've got to be as inspired to inspire you. So there you have it. So that's step five. Um, step six is uh, picture yourself achieving the goal. How do you feel when, when we know that we want to make things, so hold on. When we know what we want, we make things happen. When we don't know what we want, we run the risk of a lifetime spent we, uh, wanting for something to happen. Let me say that again. When we know what we want, we make things happen. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Um, so it's really, really important to know what you want. If you don't know, if you don't have a clear picture of what you want, you, you're gonna run the risk of sitting and waiting for something to happen. You have to make it happen. And the only way you'll make things happen is if you're really inspired by what you want to happen. Um, and then step seven is, is this goal realistic? Now I'm not, I, I made you pledge to, to abundant thinking. So realistic doesn't mean like, you know, take it down a couple of notches because you're afraid of not achieving it. It needs to scare you a little bit. It needs to make you go, whoa. Um, but what I mean by is this realistic is, are you willing to put in the time and the effort to actually achieve that thing that makes you as excited and thrilled and, you know, passionate to, to obtain? Are you willing and prepared to put in the time and the effort? It's not enough to be excited. It's not enough to be enthusiastic. It's not enough to love our mission. You have to do the work. You have to do the parties. You have to talk to the people. You have to offer the opportunity. You have to do those things. And if you're willing to do those things and your goal is strong enough to inspire you to fight through every obstacle that comes, then, then, then it is realistic. 
So you have to believe this thing about your goal. You have to be able to say to yourself, I want it. I deserve it. I can do it. And I will do it. So go back and look at some of the things that you guys wrote in that, in that post, that thread about like where you are in your business. If you said things like, I hope I do this, I, I, I missed this, but I, you know, it's probably not in the cards or some of you even wrote the word "ug." Jolyn, don't write the word "ug." You're not allowed to say "ug." I was going to put that in the pledge. Um, and change your wording. I want it. I want to do this. I will do this. Look at your goals uh, within the framework of these seven steps and, and find something that makes your heart beat faster, that stirs you, and get laser, laser focused. Um, this is where I want to start this week. You have some work to do now. Um, and I'm super excited to see what you come up with. I, I'm going to create a post. Uh, again, you don't have what I was thinking because you don't because you don't have to share your goal if you don't want to. It's okay. I understand. Some of them are deeply, deeply personal. Personal. I will tell you, I feel much freer now that I've said mine out loud. So maybe uh, maybe you will too. Um, but even if you want to just um, like on a piece of paper, write one word that represents it. Like I would have drawn a picture of the number six. I would have written six for six figures, but I would have held up a six and that would have been my trigger for myself and my kind of clue to you of what my goal is. So I'm going to create a post where you can either write out what your goal is if you want to share it, or you can just do like a, like a one word representation of what it is um, and keep it kind of personal. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to use these seven steps now to go talk to your teams about what their goals are, you know, after you kind of reevaluate and center yours, you know, then you can help somebody else find hers. Um, that's the whole idea of this class as well, is that everything we do, every, that you can go and immediately use it with other people and duplicate this process. So remember, one goal, maximum of one year, and one step at a time. Um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. That was the, uh, that was our first week. Next week, we will talk about the compensation plan because that's a really important strategy to use to achieve your goal. So now you've got a whole week to kind of think about this, uh, process this, and uh, really laser focus your goal. So thank you guys so much for being on today. Thank you for watching if you're watching the recording. And uh, have a one, oh, there's some stuff in the chat. Let me look real quick. Um, Oh, thank you for not judging me. <laughs> thank you guys. Okay, so it's just love in the chat. Just wanted to make sure there weren't any actual questions. Okay, thank you very much. I did great. Look at that, 9.58. Woo, look at me. All right. Way to go, Erin. Thanks, thank ladies. You. Have a great day. Thank Bye. you.